Are you trying to figure out how to properly set up sick pay in your QuickBooks, especially with the new rules that came out in 2024? You are in the right place if we've never met before. Hello, I'm Candace Camfer. I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And my community has been saying, hey, could you please create a video on how to do sick pay, especially because California bumped up their sick pay to 40 hours and it's not a natural part of what I'm seeing within my QuickBooks. So I have a little workaround that I want to show share with you. So a little disclaimer before we get started, I am not an HR specialist, so I may not be able to answer all the little nitty gritty questions. I am going to share with you an article that I will link down below and up above that you can go to directly on the California website. If you're in a different state, make sure you know the details. What I'm going to teach you is how to put it actually into QuickBooks. You ready to jump in? If you are looking for the desktop version of this video, go up above or down below. We have a special one for you. And if you are looking for online, you are in the right place. So what you're going to want to do is go to QuickBooks, go under payroll here on the side, move a couple little screens real quick and on payroll over here, and you will see all of your employees. You're going to go into each employee. This is a sample one that I put together to show you. You're going to go down to their salaries and sick pays over here, and you're going to click edit. Okay. When you come down to the bottom, this is where you're going to have your paid time off policies. Now, the thing to know is that every state is different. What California recently passed, I have the article here, as of January 1st, 2024, it is five days or 40 hours is what you the new rule is. You can read all about it. I'll put the article there for you. So in other words, if someone only wants to use two hours, they'd still have 38. Now you can either give it to them all up front or you can accrue it. You can read about it here. But if you're going to accrue, going to use the accrual policy, what you need to know is that with the accrual time, they can carry over from each year of employment. So make sure you're checking that it's not saying that they can only get 40 hours. They could have had other hours and it will move depending on what they have, what they have left over. OK, so employees under the accrual plan must earn at least one hour of sick pay for every 30 hours of work. Which is the 130 schedule, OK, although employers may adopt or keep other types of accrual schedule. So if you have something else that is above this, you can keep your other one. You just have to make sure you're at least within coordinates of it. The schedule must um, request an employee having at least 24 hours of accrued sick or paid time off by the 120th calendar day of employment and 40 hours by the 200th day. So it all comes down to how many days do they work? How many hours do they work? how much vacation are they getting? So if you have a part-time employee, they're going to be getting a different amount than a full-time. Okay. As I said before, in my disclaimer, I'm not a specialist, but I want to show you what you can do within your QuickBooks. Okay. So let's jump in and edit this. You're going to go into your employee. You're going to scroll down and click edit. You're going to go down here. And ideally you're going to want to change this before you start processing payroll in 2024. I'm recording this for you right before you might be doing payroll. So I want to get this out to you as soon as possible. So you're going to go here, you're going to go no paid time off if they have no paid time off, unpaid time off. It depends on your policy. So these are all options for you that you have. Then you have what's called sick pay. That's what we're talking about. And what I see a lot of QuickBooks users not doing is when they go to pay the employee, they're not entering it as sick pay. So it's not reducing it as sick pay. So you have to make sure that you actually set up your sick pay policy so that it works for you. So you, you want to make sure you're under sick pay. And then when you go to pay the employee on the payroll check, you're choosing the type of pay as sick pay. OK, so you come in here and typically 0 0.033 with a max of 24 is what was set up before. I've gone ahead and set up a 40 hours. OK, so if you do the math and you have 0 0.03333 and they work 30 hours on a calculator, it's going to come out to one hour of sick pay for every 30 hours that they work with a max of 40 within a year. Now, your employee could actually accrue more than 40 by the end of the year. They don't use it because they could have a rollover from the prior year. OK, 
So if you're not seeing the 40 hours because you haven't set it up yet, what you're gonna wanna do is click add new here and you're gonna go through and answer the question. So you're gonna add a description and you get to choose, do you want it to do at the beginning of the year? You're like, you know what? I don't wanna worry about accrual. I'm just gonna give them 40 hours from now on. You can choose to do that and pre-put 40. So the difference is if they're accruing, it's as they work, they get sick pay. If you decide just to give it at the beginning of the year, they have it to use throughout the whole year and they may or may not have accrued it, but that's up to you how you wanna set it up. You could do each pay period. You just have to be within the guidelines of the minimum. You can also have maximum allowed option. So this is hours per year and max. So it could be that you have an 80 max. They can accrue up to an equivalent of two years worth of sick pay year over year, and you can have a max. So you get to choose. You can have per hour worked, which is what the one I was reading to you on an anniversary date. So it used to be every year an employee had worked for you, that year they would get an, a new sick pay. It depends on what your policy is. You could have different policies. So I just want to explain this to you. And then unlimited, which is they can use unlimited amount of sick pay. Maybe they're on salary or you just allow them to take as many sick days as they want paid. You would choose to set this up accordingly. Now, if you want to do something like I set up here, where to cruise throughout the year, you could add in your description what you want it to be. Let me go to the 40 hour one click on the pencil and then here you can add in whatever description you want just make sure you're crewing at least here and that every 30 hours are getting at least one hour of sick pay okay so you can make this 0.4 if it, you find that it's not accruing quite to what you need it to be for every 30 hours okay so you set this up that's it you just make sure that you basically change it now you have current how many current balance of sick pay they have it's best that before you go in and start changing your employees that you go into your reports here type in vacation and sick and you'll find that you'll have your ex this is my example one you'll have all of your employees listed and you'll see what is their balance how much have they used of both vacation and sick before you start processing or switching things up i'd recommend pulling what is the current time off and then come in here and start changing this, okay? That way, if you start changing between policies, you'll know what it is. Now, if for any reason you clicked on this before you were like following along with me before I said, wait, pull this report, you can actually pull up your employee's last paycheck stub and it will say how much vacation they have used, what their balance is, as well as their sick pay balance and used, okay? So go in. Check out the law if you're especially in California or in another state. Review what the requirements are. Decide what is your new policy going to be. Are you going to be doing accrual based? Are you going to be doing the upfront policy? Are you going to do the 12 month period? There's all these different options for you. And what is the carryover so that you can have a conversation with your employees if you need to, if you need to pay for their time off or wherever you're at with that. Okay. There's also guidelines down here. If you're curious what sick pay can be used for, it's more than just sick pay. There's other options and different things that could happen that they can qualify for for sick pay. And it's guidelines on how they can use the sick pay as well. So I definitely recommend if you are the HR person in your business that you research this. If you have somebody, make sure you've updated your actual payroll policy within QuickBooks. That's it. Go in, get it updated. Make sure it's accruing properly if you need to make any kind of little adjustment to the decimal point. For every 30 hours worked, they need to get at least one hour of sick pay. That's it. That's as easy as it is to set up your sick pay. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Let me know down below if this helped you. If, I, if you got the video soon enough that you got it updated before your first payroll. If not, what you can do is go in and adjust the amount available balance based off the number of hours they worked and then have it accrue from there you can do that as well if you'd like to get these types of tips and tricks straight to your inbox you can go up above or down below and we'll send them to you and if you're thinking you'd really like to learn more about quickbooks how to properly enter in your income your expenses reconcile read your reports and this is the year you want to get it figured out check out our customizing quickbooks workshop have an amazing day i will see you soon Bye. Thanks for being here.